Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Uh, I think we're going to have some good weather. I hate to uh, project what we're going to have, but I think the weather's going to uh, be cleaning up for us. Uh, and we're going to get some, uh, we've got a great weekend plan, it looks like. It's going to be a little warm. Now. They're talking about a heat wave up in the 90, 94. But anyway, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center right there on Baldwin Road and Highway 77. I'll run by and check those folks out. They've got all kinds of good programs there you may be interested in to uh, help further your uh, education and your salary. So uh, go check them out. The high today now is going to get a 91, low tonight be 73. And the water temperature has stayed, has stayed at 82 degrees for a couple of days now. Uh, looking at our, our river readings, I, I'm a little question, a little curious about the Apalachicola River. Uh, I don't know if that's right or not. They had a computer misprint, but I, it, it is high, okay? But it says 1.6 here, according to NOAA. Uh, Choctahatchee River, you know, they didn't get a lot of rain over in Alabama, which feeds into the Choctahatchee River, so we're not seeing a lot of movement there. So the uh, Choctahatchee River is at 1.2. All right, now, on the uh, tide chart, we're in those neat tides for uh, another day or two. Today's uh, Wednesday. Let's see, right there on the 27th. Got a day of neat tide today. We're looking at a high tide at, at uh, 519, a low tide of, of 3 o'clock this afternoon. So uh, that's going to be our tides. Anyway, we're uh, looking forward to the weekend. Uh, we do have, you know, getting all this bad weather behind us, looks like, and, and we're going to have a, a good, clear weekend. But it may still be a little windy, but it's going to be warm, too. So be prepared for that. Uh, also, you know, keep in mind the uh, the rivers uh, are going to be muddy. It just you know, from rain over in the eastern, in the eastern view in the area has been has been hit hard. The folks over in Carabell and all, and and uh, I, I've talked to them, and they have just a lot of rain, a lot of flood and all. But uh, they'll they're hard, a hardy bunch over there, and they'll get everything squared away soon. I can promise you that. Now, every Wednesday morning, I'd call Captain Blair Morgan on behalf of Blue Water Outriggers and one of my big sponsors. But I, I'm just not going to uh, call Blair this morning. <laughs> Not that, I, not that I'm mad at Blair. We're just not going to have any uh, good fish reports from uh, down to St. Joe Bay or Apalachicola Bay for this past week. I did hear, right before that storm came in, I did get a call from one of our viewers that had called four tarpon. Uh, that was a Saturday, I got a call Saturday morning, you know, this past weekend. And four nice tarpon were caught, hooked, and brought into the boat by, by some folks, so, uh, by different boat, boats and all. They, he actually saw it happen. So, uh, those tarpon are down there, now they'll, they'll be hunkered down for a day or two, but they'll get back out. Okay, so that's Blue Water Outriggers report, and we'll take our first break and be back with our special guest. Your vision is precious. If an emergency arises, you don't want to be sitting in a hospital waiting room. Accidents and injuries can happen outside of your workday. That's why our team of physicians provide emergency eye care to our patients anytime, day or night. You can count on your local experts in eye care to be there for you whenever you need us. The Eye Center of North Florida. Nine doctors, one vision, yours. At Panhandle Educators, we offer full service banking. We're five star rated. A safe place for your money. Find us anytime, anywhere. Or come see us on Highway 77 north of the mall. On the east side, across from Rutherford High School. Come see us at the beach on our Jackson Boulevard. We're here in Southport on Highway 77. Live or work in Bay, Holmes, Jackson, or Washington County? You can be a member. Join, Join us. us. We'll take care, care of you. you. The letter X, it's one tough letter, and the only one that stands for something. It's the mark of the unknown factor, the spot of the buried treasure, the model of rugged beauty. But what really sets it apart is its power to multiply everything. Sweet old Bob says see and save on all Xmark products today at Soul Tracker. We are so lucky to live in North Florida. We have some of the best fresh and saltwater fishing in the world. My biggest problem is not catching fish, but trying to decide what kind of fish I want to catch. No matter what I'm after, I always stop at Sun Jammers Water Sports first. They have just what I need, rods and reels, line, tackle, and most important, fly bait. Yes, sir, we sure are lucky. Uh. 
Ah, welcome back, folks, and welcome to Captain Ken Paramore. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Uh, we were sitting here talking, and we're glad to have you on the show again. We have so much, so much to talk about. Well, before we get started about all the stuff going on, uh, we want to talk about this this big red snapper that you, you and your wife call. Oh, your wife golly. called this one here. Look. Yes, she did. Uh, yeah. That fish was 30 inches <laughs> long, and it was probably, I would guess, 18 pounds, 18 to 20 pounds. It was... Uh, the opening weekend of, of the snapper season, uh, which was, I think we went on a Sunday, because that first day Friday, it blew uh -huh. so it blew so much, it was so windy. But we got our limit down there off of, uh, actually went out of Mexico Beach, and uh, we actually were off of Cape Sandblast, is where that fish was caught, um, maybe five, six, seven miles off. Mm -hmm. um, it was a good day. Uh, yeah. All the fish were big, and, and they were biting really good. And you got a nice one, too. Yeah, I caught one just a little bit smaller now. I think it was 28 or 29 inches. So You did everything right. You let your wife catch a bigger fish, and yeah, you still was, caught one. That yeah. was her biggest fish ever, and she was tickled about it. She had a good time trying to catch it. We had a picture of both of y'all, and we can't find it, but I saved it because I'm going to show them the end of the year highlights. That's going to be a good no, picture. Thank that, was, you. that was a great picture. Yep, it was a good day. But unfortunately, as you know, um, hasn't been much fishing since then. <laughs> uh, between the wind blowing and the wow. rough seas, uh, it, it just hasn't been a very fishable June. So yeah, far. and you know, we're going to get asked, uh, I've already been asked, I know you have too, about the extension of the season, but I, I, I think it's a little, like you said earlier, it might be a little premature. Well, he, you know, the recreational season is set on the recreational quota mm -hmm. um, and how they uh, calculate or a anticipate the recreational closure. And it was, it was set for 40 days mm -hmm. based on that quota, you know, prior to the season opening. Mm -hmm. Now, um, how they're going to determine whether or not the recreational fishermen have met their quota in these, these 40 days, you know, remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't, I, I've been able to go twice, mm -hmm. and I know some bigger boats have been able to go a little bit more, but I was talking to one of our, our marine fisheries biologists yesterday, actually, and he said that there's been three to four good fishable days yeah. for most people since it opened yeah and we're into what 20 20 some odd days now okay. we, you know we're over half yeah and and big boats have gone and he's even gone on some research trips with big uh boats and if it's been rough the uh the parties have gotten sick yeah and there hasn't been much fishing and it, it, you know a lot of times the boats turn around and come in mm -hmm. so it hasn't been that productive yet the the ones who have been able to go you know, the fishing is there, the fishing is good, mm -hmm. but we have really been knocked in the head as far as yeah. being able to fish this month of June so far. And that's what I'm hearing too, Ken, and I, I tell you what, uh, I'm thinking, this is my own personal opinion, I, I know they have to do research data, I don't think they'll have it in by, by July 10th when it goes out, but what, what I'm looking at, maybe in the fall they could open up a few weekends for, uh, if, you know, to make up for something. Well, you know, if, as you remember, during Deepwater Horizon two years ago, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, there was a federal closure offshore. So they did give us uh, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays for, I think it was six weekends, mm -hmm. that it opened back up in October. It was right at the beginning of October, late September, and ran for six weekends. Yeah, three days good. each, yeah. which was which good. was nice, and uh, actually it was a lot cooler and a lot less fishing pressure then. So, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? Yeah. Um, obviously, everybody hopes for an, either an extension or some fishing dates at the tail end of the summer. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, let's see. And speaking of seasons, all this weekend we've got a uh, scallop season opening and, and grouper season opening. So, scallop opens uh, July one, which is uh, it Sunday. It is Sunday, mm -hmm. and. Um, and watching your show in the last few weeks um, doesn't look like the numbers are as good as we had hoped. Um, obviously, there's scallops down there, mm -hmm. and as you've informed your viewers, uh, it's not going to stop you from going. It's not going to stop from going. Have uh, you talked to anybody said they're not going to go because no, no, I haven't it, either. <laughs> everybody's going to have to at least go put their head on the water and look for themselves. It's you know? going to be like the uh, and, slogan for Missouri State. Uh, and some uh, people will find them. I mean, they'll be. There'll be enough in certain concentrations and, in, in, you know, where it'll be worth yeah. their while. So, and maybe the, uh, maybe the survey is, I don't want to use the word flawed, but maybe the scallops were somewhere else at the time that they did the survey. Well, they will move around. We so, all know that. They're yeah. going to move around. So. Um, but with that said, we do want to caution people about uh, bag limit 
mm -hmm. uh, and how many to take, and um, the, the safety, more important than that, while they're out there. <clears throat> As you know, a year ago and two years ago, there were so many people on the bay, it was incredible. It was. And we didn't have any serious boating accidents or incidents during those two years. It was probably the busiest, the busiest we've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. We even sent a lot of extra officers down there in the last two years because of the activity. But dive flags and the importance of the dive flag and the importance of the divers staying close to the dive flag, not venturing you know, way off from the boat where a boater that's on plane is going from one point to the next mm -hmm. can't see you until he's on top of you. The diver's responsibility too is to stay within the distance of that flag as well as the boat operator to have the flag displayed. Mm -hmm. And as you know, on, the, on boats and vessels, the flag has to be 20 by 24 inches. Years ago, as you remember, the flag was 12 by 12 yep. or something like that. And from a distance, you couldn't tell what it was until you were on top of it. So, and the people who snorkel from either the shore or leave the boat, they need to, to carry one that, that is uh, buoyant and tether it to themselves and drag it with them. That way they'll have a, a 12 by 12 right there at them and then the boat will have the, the bigger one mm -hmm. displayed. So it can be seen uh, 360 degrees. So yeah. the one in the water could have that small little flag? Yes, okay. yes. If it's just the vessel needs to display and then they have to stay close to it. If they venture out of that, that range, and I think it's 300 feet, it yeah. might be 100 feet. I have to look and I'll look in a minute. Um, <clears throat> they need to carry one with them yeah. and have it you know, they have them with the floats on them that you can tow, and you can go wherever. But and, and that's not hard to do, to get away from your boat real quick. I mean, you start looking down and you see some... Next thing you know, yeah. you know, you're way out there by that's yourself, right. and you get up and look around, and, oh gosh, there's my boat. Yeah. And you've got other boaters coming around you that don't see you. Okay. All right, look, we're going to take a quick break. A lot more good stuff. Uh, we'll be right back. Clay O'Neill's Land Clearing. When you need land clearing, pond digging, road building, or any type of excavation, Clay O'Neill's Land Clearing is fully equipped to handle it. If the job is big or small, he covers it all, serving the Florida Panhandle from Madison County to Escambia County. He's just a phone call away. Hey, thanks Clay for another job well done. Harold Milling Company, rough and tough dog food. Harold Milling Company builds it. They build hog feed, they build dairy feed, they make chicken feed, they have specialty feed for rabbits. If you got a worm farm, grandmother used to have a worm farm, look at the Harold Milling Company. You want to go down and get you, <clears throat> the dog's not running anymore, it's all over with. You want to get that 16% uh, and drop down from the 26% protein, you don't want old Rover to get fat. Harold Milling Company, you can buy it almost any feed store in the Panama City area. Steel, the number one selling brand of handheld outdoor power equipment in America. Right now, dependable grass trimmers start at just $159.95. For cleanup, hardworking steel blowers start at $149.95. Plus, double your limited warranty with your steel product purchase. Start easier, work smarter, finish faster with steel, number one in America. We know Bob says see and save today and every day on all steel outdoor products at Soul Tractor. When you stop by Blue Water Outriggers, you will find everything for your outdoor adventure. Stock up on all your favorite brands and shop for some of the latest outdoor gear and accessories. You can also shop online and have your orders delivered straight to your home. Our flagship store is nestled right off the Highway 98 in the Port City Shopping Center, just steps away from the Port St. Joan Marina. You will love our selection, our prices, and our friendly service. Okay, welcome back to here with Captain Ken Paramore. We're trying to uh, get all of our uh, laws and regulations straight so we all understand them. It's all, uh, you know, it's our responsibility as, as uh, outdoorsmen to know these laws and it's y'all's responsibility to explain them to us. <laughs> so we're gonna... <laughs> and, and you know, we, we get accused of, uh, of having to have a lawyer go fishing with us <laughs> to understand all these rules and these season dates. And there's sometimes, it's so challenging for us to keep up with them, I understand. Um, yeah what they're saying but I do want to talk a minute about the uh, the trigger fish closure which uh, 
Triggerfish closed a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, yeah. and it's closed in federal waters all the way until January the 1st. So anyone who's fishing in federal waters cannot take and keep trigger fish until after January 1st. State waters is still open. So um, the tricky part there is if you go in state waters and catch some trigger fish while you're red snapper fishing or grouper fishing, and you go out to federal waters and you have trigger fish on board, you could have a problem. If, if you're gonna fish in federal waters, I would suggest or you want to keep trigger fish, I would suggest fish the federal waters first mm -hmm. and then trigger fish in state waters before you come in. Yeah. Don't do it in the reverse because you'll be in possession of trigger fish in a closed area, yeah. which is federal waters, and we're not going to know the difference or where they were caught. Yeah, you know, Ken, that caught a lot of us by surprise because most folks don't go out there and just target trigger fish. There was a shortage of them, you know, that sort of Right, thing. the trigger fish are incidental most of the time, mm -hmm. although I do know some guys who do kind of target them and they yeah. would rather eat a trigger fish than, than, yeah. than any of these snapper and grouper some, some days. So one of our former employees who just retired, uh, he loves trigger fish and loves to catch them, as does his wife. So, but when it first came out it was a surprise we didn't i didn't know it was going to happen yeah <clears throat> and then they closed it you know during the summer right beginning in the summer and uh but it is open in state waters and uh but will remain closed in federal waters so like when they go grouper fishing july 1st in either you know they if they're in state they can keep trigger fish and if they're in federal they can't and a lot of people fishing for grouper will be fishing with different baits, but once in a while you get a big trigger fish that eats a, a bait that you didn't intend for a, you know, yeah, a, a yeah. trigger fish. Yeah, yeah like a bycatch. But now, speaking of grouper and all, I know our four counties you know, down east of us where it's flip-flop on the grouper season. Right, okay. the same thing sort of applies. Um, that, those four counties will be closed right. because it, you know, they've been open now for a few months. And if you you can land the fish back in those counties, but you can't stop and fish in those okay. counties. So it's as simple as that. Yep. Simple as that. Uh, it's yep. where you know you can land without stopping, but if you get stopped fishing in the areas that are closed and you're in possession of mm -hmm. grouper that you may or may not have caught in the open area, mm -hmm. we don't know the difference. Right. Um, so we can put in a carabelle or Indian pass and, and, and uh, sea quarters and we can go out and we can catch them and go out 10 or 12 miles and right. catch some grouper and come back in there. We just can't stop in Don't that stop in in state, in water state waters. Water. Okay. And also, now I know <laughs> uh, I've already talked about people that uh, Scallop County, St. Joe Bay was 11, and Scallop County, St. Andrew Bay was 29. And I've already talked to people who are already planning on uh, looking at some of those scallops. Are you, are you guys going to be out in, good, in full force, right? Every, every summer we have uh, issued citations in Crooked Island Sound in St. Andrews Bay because uh, the, everything is west of the Mexico Beach Canal mm -hmm. of people taking scallops and um, it, I guess it's tempting when you're you know you're snorkeling and there's scallops yeah. down there but the bay has a it's, it's, it's making a comeback it has a mm -hmm. healthy population for the habitat that it is and mm -hmm. with the East Pass being you know closed for so many years now but it's still not a sustainable amount of scallops in the bay to to warrant having a season there mm -hmm. and those people who are taking them and have taken them because we have like I said we have written tickets over the past few years mm -hmm. um, are not helping the situation by by helping themselves if you will yeah um, and I, I've kept up with it too I, I read the law enforcement reports and I read some of the comments people make and several of them said uh, well we didn't know it was closed and I it's just hard for me to believe that people it's been closed for a long time and I think they are they all know it's closed they're just I guess y'all get all kinds of stuff. Well, they, you know, they will, everybody will have to have an excuse. Very few of them, when you pull up, tell you they're caught. Um, yeah. Everybody has an excuse of why they did what they did. And, and um, you know, it was tempting or they couldn't help themselves. But it's the same thing as a guy driving down a highway and a big buck stand on the side of the road during hunting season. And he said <laughs> he can't help himself, so he shot <laughs> it. You, you know, it's the same. Yeah. It's just a different uh, scale. But it happens. Um, but we do have scallops in St. Andrews Bay, and I guess years ago we had oh, yeah. more scallops than anybody could stand. 
and then they were decimated over the years and there's a lot of reasons as to why mm -hmm. but now they're there and they do they do uh, their counts every year and mm -hmm. one day maybe we'll be able to take scallops in St. Andrews yeah. Bay and maybe even Crooked Island Sound yeah but not now yeah and that's and that's gonna be the law and I know you guys are always show up with your uniform on either do you sometimes y'all have some plain clothes guys we've got a group of uh we call them our resource protection service officers and um We've got them in the entire region now. We, we put this group together a little over a year ago, <clears throat> full time. And uh, those guys are out and about in, in plain clothes. And so there's another pair of eyes watching that people may not know. Really? And it's good for resource protection. Yeah. Uh, it really? keeps people uh, honest, let's say. All right. All right, we're gonna take our final break and come back with a fishing forecast and we'll be back with more information from Ken. So right back. When you think of a successful hunting season, two things come to mind. Browning and CNG Sporting Goods. Browning is the best there is, and CNG Sporting Goods is your factory direct full line Browning dealer. CNG stocks Browning guns, camo, knives, scopes, gun safes, bows, and much more, including hunting and fishing license. Look over the new Browning BAR camo short frame and X bolt rifles. Why pay good money for anything less than a Browning? Browning and CNG, the best there is. All with the experts. When you have work to do, get it done with a Kubota. Kubota is the top choice for reliability, efficiency, and value. And right now, during Kubota Rewards, take advantage of zero down and 0% APR for up to 60 months on new Kubota utility and ag tractors, tractor loader backhoes, and utility vehicles. It pays to own orange. See your Kubota dealer today. See and save on all Kubota tractors and equipment at Soul Tractor today. Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC is Panama City's exclusive full-line dealership. Built on a 45-year foundation of trust and total customer satisfaction in all departments. Including our huge pre-owned department, where we'll pay top dollar for your current automobile as a trade-in. Or we'll place your vehicle on our lot and help you sell it. At Bill Kramer's Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. Four decades, three generations, one tradition. Sunrise to sunset. A walk through nature takes you on a journey of Florida's Emerald Coast. You'll encounter the wildlife, birds, lighthouses, indigenous to the beautiful land and seascapes of Florida. Set to the sounds of nature and enhanced with easy listening music. Only $14.95 plus $4.95 shipping and handling. NatureWalkDVD.com or send check or money order to the address on the screen. A walk through nature. Visually stunning. Welcome back. Sitting with Captain Ken Perry. We're going over all kind of information for the Panhandle viewing audience. But first, let's look at uh, Express Lane Fishing Game Forecast for today. We're looking at our times at 6.52 to 8.52 this morning. Right there from about 7 to 9. And then this evening, we're looking at 7.18 to 9.18. Those two-hour blocks right there will be excellent time and the weather getting straightened out. So maybe you'll have an opportunity to wet a hook or just get outdoors. Uh, we're talking about Amberjack. Right. Amberjack is... Uh Still closed until August the 1st, just okay. a, a reminder, <clears throat> grouper's going to open July 1, but Amberjack will not be in when grouper opens, and then Amberjack will be August 1st, so there'll be another month of not taking Amberjack after grouper opens, so I forgot to mention that earlier. Now you're telling me, I've been asking, you know, you've been busy and all, you've been busy with a lot of, uh, uh, y'all are combining with another group, so I don't right, know. Right, it's, uh, it's kind of exciting in that... Uh, Last year's legislative session, they, um, they merged, if you will, Department of Agriculture law enforcement officers, the Department of Environmental Protection law enforcement officers who patrol the state parks, and our division of law enforcement together. So now, or as of July 1st is when it's gonna be effective, um, all state lands in the state of Florida will be patrolled by an, an enforcement taken by the FWC. Um, whether it's a state park, whether it's a state environmental area, whether it's a state forest like Point Washington mm -hmm. and Pine Log and or wildlife management areas, which, which we've always had, mm -hmm. um, there'll be one enforcement unit for the entire state by merging um, those officers. And there's like 170 some uh, uh, the DEP officer statewide, and I think there was uh, 
30 maybe of the agricultural um, guys who used to work arson and forest uh, related crimes and theft and timber theft. We're going to, it's all going to be one stop shop for enforcement on state lands after July 1. Oh, that's good. That's and, and it's been quite a challenge trying to merge uh, equipment, personnel, budgets and all that together in the last few months. So we've really been busy there. But the, um, for instance, now the, uh, the alligator that was just killed in, in yeah. St. Andrews, um, this, the park police are actively and worked in that investigation. And um, after July 1, instances like that will still be worked by park police who are now FWC officers or FWC officers who, in fact, are up to speed on enforcing park rules. So right. um, actually, there, there should be more coverage and more enforcement on state lands with the merger or at least more coordination because okay. it'll be, you know, one agency doing all the enforcement. So if anybody does have any information about that alligator that was killed in St. Andrews, we would certainly like to know. And is there a reward out for that or do we know? I'm not sure if they've done a wildlife alert yet or yeah. not, but um, anyone, anyone who does supply information can be eligible for a wildlife alert reward. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, and you know, people, a lot of times people talk, it's like your guys, your plane clothes, and we're talking about that gator, those gator hunter down in uh, Crawfordville, I think. I believe that's where it was uh, a couple of weeks ago. One of our plane clothes guys was in Walmart, and I think he was even off duty, but he was in that plane clothes unit, and he heard some guys talking at the sporting goods counter about killing alligators and going alligator hunting. So he struck up a conversation with them and one thing led to another and he got invited to go and they showed him cell phone pictures of the alligators that they'd killed the previous night or two. And the investigation developed and uh, they got search warrants and uh, a handful of them either got locked up or got some tickets and uh, they'd killed a handful of gators and this, there's no season open anywhere right now. That's so, amazing, that's, that's um, amazing. You never know. Yeah, yeah. So, well, Ken, listen, that's a lot of good information. I'm looking at our notes. We've covered a lot of stuff, and uh, we got we got some uh, this weekend with a grouper and, and scallops opening. Y'all going to have to be out in force, I guess. We do. We've got boating safety details. We'll have scallops opening, and there will be a contingent of guys on St. Joe Bay. Yeah. And we want everybody to be safe out there and enjoy it. That's what we're here to, to promote outdoor recreation and uh, a, a great outdoor experience for everybody. Well, that's probably the one thing that y'all get most of. Uh, problems with real quick on, on boating on boating and all careless operation careless in, operation yeah. in, inattention yeah um and uh not following the rules of the road okay and then like i said there'll be a lot of people out we'll talk about it more as the week goes on about how how crowded this area is going to be so uh we want to you know be careful ken thank you so much for coming on enjoyed it enjoyed always it. great Glad to have to captain ken fairmore fwc only always has some great information and thank you all for watching the show appreciate y'all doing it and sometimes uh, you do something good for somebody and god bless thanks for joining us for panhandle on tours with winston chester panhandle on tours features hunting fishing and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors join us next time for panhandle on tours